Today we're going to talk about everything you should not feed your bearded dragon. Avocados are great for us, but terrible for bearded dragons. This is due to the toxic compound persin. Now persin is an oil soluble fungicide that avocados evolved to protect themselves. It isn't harmful to us humans, but it is to other animals. It has the potential to cause liver and kidney failure. and can cause fluid to form around the heart and lungs and eventually even death. Now onions are also toxic. The toxic part of an onion is N-propyl disulfide, which is an oxidant that causes oxidative damage and can rupture red blood cells. And then the same goes for garlic for the same compounds. Potatoes contain glucocolloid solanine and cococonine, which affect the nervous system, causing diarrhea and potentially even death in some cases. Tomatoes for the same reason and the fact they have a really high sugar content as well. Rhubarb is very high in glucosides and that can damage the heart liver and kidney. Citrus fruits have many active ingredients that are very harmful as well as being really high in sugar so avoid them at all costs. Avoid chilies for obvious reasons they're spicy. Broccoli and cauliflower are also ones to avoid because they're high in goitrogens which can interfere with thyroid activity which could damage the liver and kidneys. This next group I've composed of calcium related issues but before we go into that I need to explain the calcium and phosphorus ratios. Now bearded dragons like most other vertebrates need calcium and phosphorus in their blood. They need it at a ratio of normally 2 to 1, so twice as much calcium to phosphorus in their blood. That maintains normal homeostasis around the body. If at any point that changes and the calcium levels drops below 1 to 1 to phosphorus in the blood, they'll actually draw calcium out of their bone storage to put back into the blood to maintain that homeostasis for good bodily function. So orally, when things come into the diet, it has to have more calcium than phosphorus to make sure that they don't have to take that from their bones and it adds to the ratio in the blood rather them interfering with it. Sweet potatoes are one to avoid. They are really high in sugar as well as in some cases depending on the soil they're grown in the phosphorus content can be three times as much as calcium. You could argue that you could add calcium powder to that to try and fix the problem but that doesn't change the sugar problem so it's probably best just to avoid that in the diet altogether. Spinach is one that you should avoid as well. It has high amounts of oxalic acid which binds calcium and interferes with the gut absorption. Plus it has high amounts of calcium oxalate crystals which can contribute to kidney kidney stones in the body of bearded dragons. We should also avoid peas because they have high amounts of phytic acid which also blocks the absorption of calcium. We should also avoid corn because it has high amounts of phosphorus, again remember what I told you about the calcium to phosphorus ratios, and has a really high amount of sugar. Celery also has an improper ratio of calcium to phosphorus and it's really high in oxalates. This next grouping is about sugar. Now sugar is really bad for bearded dragons and I'll tell you why. Bearded dragons don't have teeth like you and I where the teeth is separate from the jaw and it's replaced by another tooth. That's not the case. Bearded dragons have what we call acrodont teeth and that is basically their jawbone is serrated to form teeth but it's not actually teeth. If they were to get cavities or any other sugar related problem once they lose that jawbone it's gone. So it's really important that we limit or even completely avoid sugar in the diet of our bearded dragons. And because of that, fruit should just be avoided in the diet of a bearded dragon altogether. One, because it's really high in sugar and because it ferments in the gut, causing stomach problems such as bloating and discomfort. These dragons do not eat a load of fruit in the wild, so there's no need for them to get it in their captive diets. Many people like to use it as a treat because it is obviously tasty to a bearded dragon, and then they're trying to like brush their teeth after. Just don't bother. You shouldn't need to brush a bearded dragon's teeth if you give them a good clean diet. Another the one that a lot of people feed is bell peppers. Now bell peppers have a really good calcium to phosphorus ratio so that's good but they're also really high in sugars. But they're also really good for carotenoids which are the precursors to vitamin A formation in a bearded dragon. So what I would do is include them in the maintenance diet of crickets, allow crickets to eat that and allow them to simulate the beta carotenoids into their flesh. But it actually uses them as a buffer so the bearded dragons aren't actually just crunching down on a load of sugar in bell peppers. They've been metabolized by crickets and has gone through a process. So in theory, the effects are lessened to some degree. Carrot for the same reason is really high in sugars, but is really good for carotenoids for the precursors of vitamin A. So use those crickets in the same method I've described previously. Just stick to greens and flowers because that's what we're going to be eating in the wild. So let's talk about whole prey items. When I mean whole prey items, I mean pinky mice, 
adult mice, things like lizards. You see all of this being shown on YouTube shorts or just videos across the platform in general. All studies have shown bearded dragons to be incredibly insectivorous and herbivorous. And I believe there is one record of a central netted dragon found in the diet of a bearded dragon. I am completely unfamiliar with any mammalian prey being found in the diets of wild bearded dragons. It's not a major component of their diet, especially when they would have to compete for those mice with things like snakes, which is not a thing they're going to do. So to keep feeding bearded dragons adult mice and things like that puts immense pressure on their digestive system having to process all the bones all that fur it's just not really all that natural we have to realize that the amount of exercise that our captive dragons get in their vivariums is astronomically different from the amount of exercise they'd get in the wild that huge amount of proteins and lipids having to be processed by that liver at once is a big deal so with less exercise and captivity and a reduced caloric expenditure we then want to give them a leaned down diet to match that so our bearded dragons don't get fat now some people do make a good argument that you can give pinky mice to a female bearded dragon post laying to bulk her back up. However, I do disagree. These pinky mice are neonatal, meaning have poorly developed skeletal systems. That means that their skeletons aren't very well ossified, meaning they have more phosphorus in them than calcium. So you've got a female dragon who's used loads of calcium to produce loads of eggs. Then you're giving her loads of pinkies, which are shooting those calcium requirements right up. I actually think you're actually contributing to the problem rather than solving it. I actually interviewed the world's leading expert on bearded dragons, Beardy Vet, on this channel, and he advised rather than feeding pinkies, just up the portion control of insects that you would feed post laying and then obviously lean off once you've got them back up to a suitable weight. Just don't be lazy and use the mice. So you might be left thinking, what can I actually feed a bearded dragon? And to find that out, watch this video right here. 